Hey guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and today's episode, we're going to be taking some terrain, uh, 3D printed pieces like this, and we're going to be doing some weathering to them. Now, this has been coated in a Dulux Concrete Effects spray paint, as well as a Dulux Granite has been sprayed onto uh, the base to create this textured rock effect. Just doing that will give you beautiful rock effects, uh, no matter what you're working on. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this here and turning this concrete effect into a sort of uh, old, slightly mouldy, you know, lichen build-up type concrete. And we're going to do it as quickly as possible for tabletop terrain. So obviously you're going to need water, you're going to need some sponge. Uh, we've got three different types here. We have this bit of um, tearaway type sponge out of a packing case. We've got some of this blue stuff here, which probably won't use. But uh, we've also got some of this sort of uh, car wash uh, sponge. Also got uh, four different uh, paints from Vallejo's model air range. Now I picked air because it starts out a lot thinner and that's going to work better for us today. It's not the cheapest paint in the world. It's not the most expensive either. Um, you could do this with regular sort of art paints thinned right down, but I just don't think they need to. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to wet down the uh, particular model that we're working on here. Because we're not working with uh, varnished models ready to do like acrylics and enamels, uh, sorry, uh, enamels and oils, uh, we're working with acrylics. So I wet it down. Now, this type of paint and the PLA are both slightly porous and water uh, absorbent. So you can see it darken right up from the water soaking in. Now, we're going to take this part and apply dots. Don't worry, I'll move it into frame around different key areas. Then we're going to take some bits of sponge. And we're just going to drag it around and move it around. And the water is going to thin it right out. And we're essentially performing a big wet blend, but with no real technical skill on this particular part. So this is how we are going to do our basic weathering. Now, if you're trying to paint some sort of terrain to some sort of heavy metal standard, this is probably not the process you're going to do. But if you're trying to paint a bunch of terrain because you're going to be having an event like myself, for example, this is the quick way, quick and nasty way to just get some paint on the model. Now, if you get too much paint on, just use another wet sponge, just load it up with water and just wick away the excess, essentially. You can also use dry paper towel or tissue in order to help out. Now we're taking lots of different uh, colours and we're trying to smear them together. The sort of colours you're going to see like dirt, clay, uh, rusts, moulds, that kind of thing. We're, we're trying to really generate some contrast here. Now we change direction based on the orientation of the part. So obviously here the curve is a completely different angle to uh, on the front side. So we're going to brush it in a different direction here. Now like I say, if you get too thick, too much of the paint, Water, wick it away. What we're looking here uh, for here is tonal variation throughout the miniature. We don't want to be seeing big, really obvious clumps of one colour. We want to see it sort of fade into that colour like there's just a patch of, you know, unclean concrete uh, for a very long period of time. Like this is an abandoned uh, bit of city or bit of uh, generator. I do know I hold it out of frame a bit and I do apologise. But we're not trying to teach you how to paint like a pro today. We're trying to teach you how to paint quick because tables seem daunting. And if you are building a wargaming table and you want to play games with your friends, you've got nice printed terrain like this. This is some of my own 3D printed terrain. This is a file from Sacris Mundus um, for those who are curious. Uh, I support him on Patreon. I do want to use my print farm to start printing these for people so people can buy tables off me and I'll do it for a damn good price. Um, I'll talk more about that later. So we're basically spreading out the paint all across this uh, one side of the model. I'm not going to do the two sides, so I want you to be able to see the difference between where we start and where we're at. So again, we're looking for old concrete. Now I can get down inside there into the gap between the two halves and also paint that up a bit, but for the sake of the tutorial today, I'm not going to bother because you get the idea, okay? So we're painting just the outside, just this one side. Now we're taking some of that lighter concrete coloured uh, model air paint now and we're carrying a nice little bit of sponge off. We want a nice rough uneven surface. If you go for a completely flat surface, it sponges awfully. Now while it's still wet, we're sponging on. Now you wouldn't do this on a traditional model, but because this particular model is so wet, so hydrated on the surface, it's going to help wet blend that in because we're not trying to chip here. What we're trying to do is add some tonal variation. And you can see that that gray starts to blur 
uh, into the green and the brown of the uh, streaking that we've already applied. And what that's going to do is it's going to create just this, you know, especially once we uh, give it the old swipe here, it creates this look of, you know, some bits of concrete are a bit lighter than others, you know, without it looking like it's being chipped away. So this is just weathered, you know, it's just set out in the open environment. Now we're going to repeat a similar thing, and we're going to do it with this bit of ZM wall. Now this is filament 3D printed like the last piece of terrain, not resin 3D printed. And this has been hit with just a rattle can of the same Dulux uh, spray paint. So same process here, we're just going to wet it down. Now you're going to go, oh, it's not fully undercoated. Um, you know, how nasty a process is this? Well, again, if you're painting a ZM table, it's your first time doing it. This is what I would call your starter process. This is how you make a table that's going to look presentable to people, but without spending four hours on every part. So we want to do this in just a few minutes. So it took us five minutes to do half that generator. We're going to take a similar amount of time here. So first things first, we're adding a little bit of this green tone in here again. Uh, it's a lovely olive drab green. And again, tonal variation is everything. Real buildings, real walls, outdoors, uh, or old murky like think of train stations okay think of the scummiest train station you've ever seen minus the wall graffiti okay it's not pristine it's not clean because there's moisture build up there's different times the concrete was poured all of it has an effect so we're also going to add some more moisture in here so you see me constantly use the wet sponge and i'm just putting in dots of this this bright orange and dragging it out and it's creating a sort of not a rust effect but just sort of a a tarnished surface like some sort of oxides have built up on the surface maybe and and we're going to try and do this all around this particular um, piece of terrain and again we want to go nice and quick here and we're using model air paint because it's very very thin straight from the manufacturer but like i say you can take craft paint mix it with a bunch of thinner or flow improver uh, put it into your own dropper bottles that's fine me personally though <laughs> i'm using like probably 15 drops for a piece of terrain this size from a single dropper, if that. And by the time I wet it out, it goes a mile, okay? It really does. And that includes like mixing washes and things like that that we'll get to later. Now you can see those little bits of um, yellow where I hadn't fully sprayed the part down. You can see it doesn't really matter now because already we're getting similar tones uh, to that yellow filament that this was printed with when my undercoat didn't cover. We're actually getting similar tones here just from this really rough... Uh, sponge streaking so it's not pretty to look at yet but you know we, we don't expect it to be pretty so we're just sponging little bits of color on here and there uh, not a wash but not also proper painting either now so we're just taking water we're really hydrating it up getting that paint to flow and we're trying to get it to pool here not like contrast paint though Okay, very important difference between them. Contrast design for pooling, this is not, because we want this to cling a bit to the surface and do a few other little things along the way. So that's why we're just you know, sponging it out, trying different colours. So again, it's not going to look impressive at first, but this system relies on you building it up over time. So anyway, let's let that dry, and we'll come back in a moment after that's had a bit of a chance to dry, and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> I'll just keep knocking things around. Um, one last thing we're going to do as well before we go and let it dry proper is where we've just sort of um, worked that sort of thing. We're going to we're going to put a bit of the orange in and sponge some little bit of more of the uh, edges here. So like on the last part, we're doing this while it's wet because it's going to just bleed a little bit from where we sponge it. Um, this step here, it, it's just to add again, tonal variation. Tonal variation is everything with this part. If we're gonna make something sort of quick and nasty, quote unquote, this is how we do it, okay? And we're gonna need a, probably another drop or two as well um, of paint before we finish sponging down this part. But like I said, it really does go a lot further than you think um, using this particular method. Now, if you're doing this in bulk, it's probably worth it mixing up with craft paints into pots uh, doing all these walls at once so just go through and do all of your walls with one step then the next step don't feel like you have to do it all at once now we've come back with it dry this only took maybe five minutes uh, because it's so wetted down um, it, it evaporated very quickly 
and this is what our concrete looks like. So you can see it's starting to actually look like a proper concrete. By the way, that Dulux concrete effect, I like it because it, um, it gives you a lot of inbuilt tonal variation because it has some small metal particulates embedded within the, the grey um, paint itself without being a metallic paint. Now we're going to create little dots and we're going to drag from those little dots down and just create these little grime streaks. Now, ideally something like say AK weathering enamels would be perfect for this. But again, as I can't state this enough, we're not pro painting terrain here. We're painting quick and nasty terrain, okay? So it doesn't need to be perfect. And if you do something like that, see, I've, I've made a slightly curved streak. It doesn't look right. We just take a bit of wet sponge and then we just gently just drag it and look at that, blend it in, no harm, no foul. Not techniques you would traditionally do on vehicles. Um, you can, but it may not look that crash hot. So we're just doing it here because we have a lot of terrain to paint and we want to do it quickly and we want to have it look good on the table. Good looks is not directly related to the proportion of time it takes to paint a model. And I think this is really what worries a lot of new painters. They, they get a model and they think, oh, I've got to spend hours and hours and hours working on this or it's not going to look any good. No, you can make something that looks perfectly presentable and all you need to do is spend you know 15 minutes of paint on it, if that. Uh, you don't need to buy a ton of different paints. You don't need to cover in all these different varnishes. You don't need to go out and buy uh, all these expensive pigments and enamels and oil paints. You don't have to. Does it look good when it's done correctly? Yes, it can look fantastic. And I'm not saying you can't do that, but that's not our goal today. All we're doing today is we're just adding a bit of tonal variation using acrylic paints and simply over hydrating the surface of our models in order to make it look presentable for the tabletop, okay? Doesn't need to be perfect, just, just presentable. And we're just creating these little patches, you know, where, where the green would sort of, you know, mold and water and stuff would more naturally pool on these models if they were out in the open in real life. That's what we're trying to work here. And again, it's just a tiny little bit of this olive drab green, just, just wet it down. And, and then we're just applying some streaks in just different locations on it. No particular order on the surface, no rhyme or reason. We don't need to put a ton of thought into it, okay? We just, you know, streak it out a little bit, wet it down. It doesn't have to look perfect because life isn't perfect, you know. You're not going to be sitting there examining this terrain super close up. It's not going to be in hyper-focused detail. This is gaming terrain, okay. This is the sort of thing that when you come to one of my events, all the tables are going to be with this quality of terrain, okay. And like I said before, this is 3D printed terrain. This is the sort of terrain I print at home. And you can already see... The difference between the bare concrete and the concrete we're working on here. Look at that. Exact same part. All right. And we've spent, what, eight minutes, if that, of this video on it? All right. So now it's time to do a bit more on this ZM wall. So what the hell are we going to do? Well, we're going to take a dot of orange. We're going to take a bit of water. We're going to thin it out because we're going to create a sort of nasty wash by adding the orange to that bit of green we had left over. And we're just putting in some little streaks, but these streaks aren't going to stay. We're going to wipe them away. Again, we tonal variation. I'll say it a thousand times in this video till you get sick of it. But we wash into the occasional recess. We put it coming out of the occasional rivet or bolt. And it just means that there's this one or two green streaks going down the side of the model. And it just makes it look a bit different. You know, you don't want every side to look identical. So now we're taking three drops of paint, one of brown, one of green. And I, well, technically I put two drops of orange in here. And we're just mixing them together because these are the different colours we're using on this model. So when we sponge them on, they're going to blend in or tie in pretty nicely with the particular colours we already have on there. Because they are those colours, it's a different shade of them. So we're applying those colours and we want to try and aim for edges. Anywhere there's a sharp point or sharp edge is where the most wear and tear will happen on an object, okay? Because if you, everyone's walked into a wall before, you know, or stubbed your toe on the corner at the bottom of a doorway, that's where it happens, right? Same with stairs. You don't trip by kicking the middle of a stair, you trip by catching the edge of a stair. So that's where we sponge, whether it's on tanks, whether it's on 
marines, whether it's on vehicles, uh, whether it's on pieces of terrain, whether it's on flyers, it's always the edges. You keep the the uh, the texture on big flat surfaces relatively minimal. Now we're going to take a little bit more of that green, mix it into that same existing mix. We're going to get a nice uh, baby diarrhea brown here, and. We're now adding some more green tones into this. So we only have a very minimal amount of green in here from when we first sort of streaked it at the start. And what this green is doing, we're going to apply it mostly up high because it's going to be like the top is damp. You know, maybe all the mold and such is, is collected up the top. Who knows, right? This is where our greasy, grimy um, our looks are. Uh, and as for the amount of texture you can see when I stamp, it's not putting an awful lot of texture out. So don't put too much paint on your sponge. That's a sort of beginner's mistake when it comes to sponging. They just overdo it. Um, this seems to be the same painting technique. I said you don't use this for heavy metal uh, quality painting, but Death Guard players seem to think this is the way you must paint your miniatures. <laughs> don't do that, guys. So still not looking that impressive, right? But you can see that it's starting to take a bit of shape. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some of that concrete in. So same color mix, same foundational colors are in there, but it's going to be heavily diluted at this point in time. And now we're sort of stippling on this lighter color concrete. Same idea, we're going to be doing it around the edges, but we're going to go top to bottom in this case, okay? We're going to go heavier at the top, but we are going down the miniature. And we're just slowly sort of blending it down. So the lightest color is going to be at the top. Uh, and we also have that darker green at the top. And the idea here is that these are maybe the edges that people have just brushed against. And it's and it's cleaned them up a little bit, you know. that's that's It's, it's not as terrible as it otherwise could be. So we're applying this around because, again, tonal variation. Look at a piece of really old concrete. Look at like a, an abandoned bunker from one of the wars just sitting there, especially for the people in Europe, this is easy. I can brush away the excess because this airbrush paint is so thin as well. So you would have seen me do that there. Um, and we brush around, uh, brush, <laughs> sponge around just all these little whips and surfaces and stuff. And we're just trying to add a bit of contrast, a bit of color into this. And it's starting to look, you know, pretty nice and can't stress the point enough this is not pro painted you know ultimate terrain but if this is your first time out painting terrain maybe you're coming to me and you're like oh, i want to buy one of these very similar to zone mortalis walls off your maca can you build me a set uh, this is might be how you paint it so that's what our wall is looking like here and I think it's looking pretty good. So just adding a little bit more of like our greens and such back in because we want to break up the color. Just that, just that little bit more on this model, you know, just final few stipples here and there, just that little bit of mossy, lichen-y build up that you just, you just get, you know, and we're just trying to give it all these different textures on the surface. This is 3D printed in filament. You can't even tell that at this point. You can barely, barely even tell. You'd think this was resin 3D printed or that it was just a simple plastic part. But any texture that is in there from the 3D print will get hidden by a lot of this stippling. That's the beauty of it. So this here as well is, what, 10 minutes, if that? And I'm doing it slower because I'm doing it on camera. Normally, I'd use bigger sponges and I'd be batch painting. Last thing here, one drop of orange, one drop of brown, five or six drops of water. If roughly added to it. You know, we're going quite thin here because we're just making a very quick and nasty wash. So we're just putting that around the edges. And it doesn't matter if droplets, you know, run down the walls or whatever. Rust runs, you know, rust from reinforced concrete. It will run down the surface of the concrete and stain it. It's not a big deal. We'll just come on with the sponge at the end of this or our finger and we'll just wick it away then. So just getting it into all these little sort of churchy architrave type surfaces. We'll also come in in a moment and just add a little bit more orange uh, to it as well because we don't want this brown to just, you know, one tone of brown to just build up as a wash. It's not going to look very nice. So like I said, wick it away with the sponge. There we go. And you know, make sure it covers fully the surfaces. No point putting a wash down if it doesn't get in everywhere. And then we take our little drop of orange, 
just drop it straight into the mix I've already done there because I'm working quick and dirty today. And then just little spots that I want to pick out and just add a little bit more color to, I'll just add it in there, especially around the corners because the richest rust that's going to form is always going to be in corners. Now, should concrete rust? No. <laughs> But the rebar in it might, and some of it might be exposed, or it could have had a piece of metal uh, sitting above it for years out in the rain, or there's a lot of humidity on the starship maybe that this, this is in, maybe this is a base on a starship, um, oh, not a base on a starship, the hull of a starship, jeez, I'm all over the place with my commentary today, um, but yeah, we just put our bit of orange in there, you know, and we've got lots of hydration in the surface still, just let it run, and you know, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's it. That's all we have to do today. 20 minutes and we've painted two completely different terrain pieces. And here's what it looks like. Now that is perfectly acceptable for tabletop terrain. You can go in now, you can add decals onto those little windows or architraves. You can add more streaky enamel effects. You can come along later on and add more to it. And you can see just all the different tones in the surface that looked horrible as I was doing it on camera, but now you can actually see it. And you can see all those different tones together and it looks like old concrete. Yeah, it, look, these green streaks would look better if they were done with enamels, sure. But again, could come along and do that later. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm back with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you all on the next one.